Yo, yo, yo. CPA Strength here, strongest CPA that you know. And how do you know me? Because you're subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and subscribe for more videos every day, 8 a.m. Daily uploader. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just handle it, biz. I know no way out of control. More weed, more cars and clothes. 20,000 showing up at the show. When the kings of the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. So this is what my mentor told me when he. Uh, left the job I was at Anyways, he was a CPA up in New York for a while. I guess I don't know That's what he said I tend to believe him. He was a CPA in Florida for a while and um, He was like uh, One of the I guess one of the managers there it was a really weird kind of place, but he would help me out all the time. I, I guess I would want to call him my mentor, even though he never was like, hey, I'll be your mentor. You know, he was like 20 years older than me. I was trying to get my CPA license. He had his CPA license for a long time. He probably worked 20, 30 tax seasons under his belt where this I was going into my third tax season. So he would help me on the most practical things and, um, what I really liked about how Jerry would help me was he wouldn't just tell me the answer, you know, he'd be like, well, you know, what do you, what, why do you think this, or what do you think about that, or oh, this is good, or, um, just, just really certain things, like, I would give him, um, financial statements, and I would have the income statement on the top, and then the bottom would be the balance sheet, and he's like, no, 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 and I'm like, why? He's like, it just is, that he's like, you know, because you can glance at, he just gave me the reasoning, so like, I didn't learn that in school, I didn't learn that from anybody but Jerry, and now it's like, if I see an income statement, if I see some financial statements roll through and the balance sheet in on top, who is this loser, like, you don't know what he's doing, so, little things like that, some games played, he had a lot of GP, I'm getting my GP up, I'm sharing my GP with you, GP is games played, right? So that's the, that's, that's what pops in my head. Like he's definitely the one and that little teeny bit was like, no, balance sheet goes on top. Like no one else told me that. No one else thought that was important. Little stuff like spelling things correctly on a tax return, you know, capitalizing the first word and leaving the rest small on a tax return. Like, oh, it just, oh, it's just so cringy when I see a tax return that has a misspelled, like, Electricity's misspelled on the tax return, like, ugh, ugh, cringe. I mean, just the little stuff, like little. He was just little, little detail. Where I was like, yeah, it don't matter. He's like, no, it matters. Like, what was the things? Like, I used to do like a tick mark, like a check. Like, if you're going to do a bank statement, I would put a tick mark in front of it. And he goes, no, 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 you don't do that. You go put it in behind. You put it in behind. You know, and I'm like, why? Everything was, I was always like, why? <laughs> like every fucking time, why? <laughs> like a little fucking baby kid, why? <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, he's telling me, you know, because you never know, like that, that tick could be mistaken for a number or a decimal or whatever, you just put it up behind and it's just, so I started doing that, and there's probably so many more things that he, there is, there's so many more things that I worked with him for about a year and a half. What I'm getting to is, you know, and I saw how you leave a place. You give your two weeks, you tell the owner, and then Jerry was to tell everyone else who worked there, you know, I'm, I'm moving on. And he said, I have nothing bad to say about this place. I love my time here. Um, you know, very, very professional. So I learned from example on how you leave a, leave a, leave a job. You give your two weeks notice. You don't say anything bad about anybody because they just gave you, uh, employment. And I mean, if you're not a lazy worker, you know, if you're a good worker there, why, why burn a bridge over cause you're done with it? Just a couple more weeks. So I saw how he, how he handled his exit with class and I tried to do the same exact thing and I've never had any thing bad to say about anybody who ever worked there except quote unquote the screamer 
who was my boss, who was one of my bosses at this job, who screamed at me in front of everybody, and we'll get to that one day because, as a moment, I'm still like as a man because after getting bullied in middle school, I said no more. I said if any, if anybody, anybody ever raises their voice at me, I'm gonna knock their head off. And this guy raised his voice at me and yelled at me in front of everybody. But it was like I wanted to see pay license that bad. I was it, but that's for another time. Bad things, dog. Bad things. For reals. For reals bad things. You think you're going to be like 140 pounds and just scream at me in front of everybody, dog? Nah, player. Nah. Uh, you don't big boy me like that. Anyways, I have a lot of issues. Well, I went to Jerry's office. It was his last day. It was like the afternoon. You know, he's taking the boxes out there. And I just... Uh, I went to his office and I said, like, Jerry, I just want to say, like, how think how grateful, how thankful I am that you took time to teach me things, to help me, you know, and, and, and to guide me and stuff. And, I, and it's very valuable and I really thank you for that. And he said, you're very welcome, you know, da-da-da. Uh, and then he said, uh, he said, you know, in the future going on. Just do what's right and you'll be fine. And I was like, okay. And I mean, just just do what's right and you'll be fine. And I mean, I guess really that could go for almost any career or anything in life. Like, you have to internally be okay with your decisions. Like, you have to sleep at night. You have to put your head on the pillow. And uh, specifically with... With... Um, with accounting and taxes, it, there is a lot. There is a lot of gray area. You would think maybe it's all just set in stone. It's just numbers and every all the rules are set in stone. But it, there's a there's a ton of gray area where the IRS does not really have a definite thing, and there's not definite sightings, and you know there's pushing up thing. You know there's just a lot of gray area. Clients will always ask you to do stuff or, you know, they don't have a CP license that they work seven years on. So what do they care? They're like, eh, just throw a couple hundred grand on my tax return. Eh, no big deal, eh. <laughs> I actually had someone ask me just to, just to add $200,000 onto their income so they could get a house. It's always about the house. Anyways, we'll get that in a separate, but so, uh, yeah, when he asked me throw on 200 Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I think, what did Jerry tell me? Jerry told me, just do what you think's right. And I was like, oh, this ain't even close to right. Like, no. But then, you know, when a single mom comes in and she's got two kids at home and, you know, this or that, can I use this? And it's kind of a gray area and I'm like, oh man, this... This woman's working so hard. I'm like, I, I feel like it's the right thing if I put her in for this credit or I put her in for this expense. Like, if I feel in my heart that it's the right thing, then I do it and I use that. So, that's what my mentor told me. You guys have a blessed whatever time you're watching this. And I will see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. sharp CPA strength. And I'm out in deuces.